So today we're going through a Delphi Harrison V5 compressor that was sent in as a failure. Uh, we've taken some of the components apart to, uh, for demonstration. You see we've removed the drive plate off of the compressor. And part of the problem with this compressor is, it's a little bit hard to see in the camera shot, but this compressor was dropped at some point in time. And you can kind of see it there. The drive plate is bent. When the compressor hit and bent the drive plate, it also bent the shaft of the compressor. So remove the drive plate, remove the pulley assembly, remove the field coil, remove the bolts out of the compressor assembly, and we can break the compressor into its main pieces. We have the front head which is also the crankcase on a V5. And you can see one important thing to note here when we're dealing with a V5 compressor, unlike a lot of compressors, a V5 has a sump. So when you add or drain oil from the compressor, it goes into this drain plug. That's very important to note when you are doing a compressor replacement and you have to drain oil from a service compressor that comes with oil in it or adding oil to the service compressor that is where you do it. It does not go in and out of the suction and discharge ports like a lot of compressors. So if we remove the front hub, now you see the back part of the swash plate assembly. And the way that this works, this compressor is a variable displacement, hence the name V5. So we have a swash plate that moves the pistons up and down in the bores. As the compressor displacement changes, we change the pressure in the crankcase to move the swash plate up and down. The further the swash plate moves down, as in the position it's in right now, right now it's about in maximum displacement. The further the swash plate is down, the more angle it has, the more displacement we get with every rotation of the compressor. We take the back head off, we can see the piston assembly and the thrust bearing. We see the five cylinders, hence this is a V5 compressor. And we can start to see some of the problem with this compressor. This compressor is actually locked up. Part of the problem, as I said, when the compressor hit, the shaft is slightly bent. But this compressor also had some type of contaminant in it. Unfortunately, we don't have smell-o-vision that you can smell what I'm smelling. But whatever was in this compressor is not pag oil. It smells like this particular compressor got some flush solvent in it. And you can see how much corrosion is on the valve plate. This is the discharge valve plate. And we have the suction valve plate and inside the rear head. It's a little bit hard to see, but on the shaft, you can also see it's rusted where the thrust bearing and the front bearing ride. And inside the front housing of the compressor, we have a front shaft bearing down here and that bearing is seized as well. So it looks like this compressor got some contaminants in it that in addition to the bent shaft, if this compressor had been run for a long period of time, would have caused it to lock up. We can see the valve plate assembly back here as well. On this particular compressor, we have two valve plates in one package. The thinner valve plate here is the suction reed valves that goes on the back side like this. So this reed valve opens when the piston is coming down on the stroke and sucks refrigerant into the cylinder. The thick valve plate that has the gasket on it, you can see down in here, these are the discharge reed valves. So when the piston is moving up in the board, that pushes the refrigerant out of the cylinder. In the back head of the compressor, right here we have our suction port that has a screen on it to protect the replacement compressor and we see the discharge port. So refrigerant comes in this port and out this port. The ports here and the hole there are for the compressor control valve. So the compressor control valve through this port senses the pressure in the low side of the system. The job of the compressor control valve is to keep the low side pressure about 30 psi, not to let it drop lower than that. If the low side pressure drops below that, the uh, compressor will bleed pressure into the crankcase of the compressor to move the angle of the swash plate to compensate for 
changes in pressure. That's how we change the displacement of the compressor by bleeding discharge refrigerant through the control valve back into the crankcase. So in a nutshell, that's how a V5 compressor works. As we said, this compressor had some type of contaminants in it in addition to oil. This is why we recommend, for the most part, not flushing a system, replacing uh, contaminated components. And we recommend that if you're going to flush, why most OEMs recommend either closed circuit flushing with refrigerant, or if you're flushing with solvent, you have to be very, very careful to get all of the solvent out. This compressor got some type of solvent in it, and you can see the damage that the solvent has done. So one of the things that I did neglect to take out on this compressor is if you look down inside the snout of the compressor, you can see the front seal there. It's a double lip style seal. The seal is held in with a snap ring. So coming apart with this compressor, generally before you separate the halves of the housing, you would use a pair of snap ring pliers, remove that snap ring that's in there, and then there's a special tool to pull the shaft seal out. So going back together with one of these compressors, because of the plumbing that's inside, orientation is very critical. So I usually start putting these together with the back housing. And you can see where the ports are for the control valve is going to be your reference point. So we would put in a seal kit for this compressor, you would get new gaskets. So I would put a new gasket on the discharge valve plate, and my discharge valve plate and my suction valve plate attached to it. And you can see here, we've got the ports for the control valve. And we're gonna line up the ports for the control valve. Clock that. And we're gonna drop that into the back housing of the compressor until it's aligned. Now I have that lined up. Next in, I'm going to take my cylinder and shaft assembly. I'm going to find the ports right there. And I'm going to line that up. Now, if I was putting this compressor back together to go into service, you can see there's two grooves here in the compressor that accept an O-ring. We have the O-rings out for ease of assembly. When those O-rings are in, this is very, very tight. And what you wind up doing is putting everything together, starting the bolts, and using the bolts to pull the halves of the compressor together. So I'll put that together, line it up. Then on the front of the compressor, we see the shaft here that holds the swash plate. And you can see in the compressor right there, is a spot that receives that shaft. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to clock it, and if I did this right, I'll be able to start the bolts. So we put the bolts in, tighten the bolts, then with that all together, you would put a new front seal into the compressor. At that point, the compressor is together. Make sure that it turns freely, and you would add oil to the sump. We could then also install the compressor control valve. The compressor control valve goes in the rear housing. You can see there are four O-rings on the compressor control valve. It's also not a bad idea to replace the control valve if you are trying to fix one of these compressors. Uh, the control valves do fail sometimes, and they're not a very expensive part. Orientation on this guy doesn't matter. Lube up the O-rings, drop it into the bore. When it's in all the way, there's a snap ring that holds it in place. We would then take and install the field coil. The field coil goes down on the front of the compressor. Make sure that it is clocked properly. In this case, it's going to go line up like that. There is a special tool that is a driver that goes down inside of the field coil so that you can drive it onto the housing of the compressor. GM does not use the snap ring to hold the field coil. And once the field coil is in place, there's another tool to drive the clutch plate on. Make sure to check the bearing. This is a good time to replace the bearing if it needs to be replaced. You can see the bearing is staked into the pulley. So when you press the bearing out from the back, 
press from this side. You press a new bearing in and then there's a tool to make new stakes. So you can install that. The stakes you don't have to cut, they will come out on their own when you press the bearing out. Then we would take the pulley is keyed. You can see there's a keyway right there. Keyed to the shaft, put the pulley on, and there's an install tool. Set the air gap to service manual specification. If you're lacking a specification, generally for a V5 compressor, about 25 thousandths of an inch works well.